shaking through session with Cassandra Jenkins went great. This is definitely the type of song that has led to competing forces within the production saying, I need to hear this more. No, 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 I need to hear this more. You know, so there's a lot of potential angles for this. I mean, people remixing this could go a lot of different directions with it. They could make it sound like the band, or they could make it sound like Bambi. But it's cool, it's a cool challenge, it's, it's fun, everybody's happy in the end. But this is one of those songs where it's like, wow, it's, it can go a lot of different ways, but it can only go one way, it can't go all ways. Right now we have almost no ability to tell what these drums sound like, because it's all coming, like you're singing so quietly and you're playing so quietly, yeah. that well, he's, quiet, yeah. even playing quietly, he sounds like he's walking on eggshells right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, yeah. and that's never good. You can hear when musicians have a question mark over their head, you know? When people don't have a solid, stable, rhythmic element to all unite to, you can hear the fear in the room. We'd make a big mistake if you're just following these guys. They, we kind of need to come up with something that everybody's in on, okay. you know? Can you, go, can you go to it? Like, so this is great. This was well-timed, in my opinion. See, this sounds good. Watch. Where are you? Like, that seems great. Oh, 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 wait, wait. Can you stop it? So just do one of those and then pick the time back up. So it's like boom, boom. We end up using mostly just the overheads for the drums. Maybe like a 70-30 balance between overheads and room mics. And I think that was cool because it gave it more of that, that live feel of all these performers playing in the room together, even though you know the drums weren't tracked at the same time as the orchestra, it still kind of sounds like they were just because it's the same room and you can hear that room in the recording. It's sounding great, actually. Okay, cool. Yeah. I wouldn't mind hitting that maybe a couple more times. Yeah, let's do it, let's okay. do it. The initial challenge was how were we gonna make this something that was truly unique and truly special and not dismantle what the song is to begin with, instead to sort of really amplify it. Our solution was Josh Stamper and Dan Delaney and the Dark Horse Orchestra and to really play with these like classic cinematic orchestral additions to the song. Ryan, I was thinking of you the whole time I was working on this. Yeah? You're a total Bambi head. Cinderella thinking, and Bambi, yeah. I was thinking, I think Brian will like this. Yeah. You just need lots of woodwinds doing yeah. fluttery things. For the last couple of years, every time Josh Stamper and I do work together, I bring up the idea of Walt Disney recordings. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, Bambi, Cinderella, all that stuff from like anywhere from like the 50s through the 60s. I think what's really interesting about that era of orchestration is that it is quintessentially cinematic. I think that that's a really interesting place to look for inspiration and ideas. It sort of naturally found its way into this episode with Cassandra. When we get to E, um, just keep the, uh, yeah, the quarter should feel short. Okay. Everybody ready? Yep. Mm. Here you go. For all the orchestral instruments, we used the same chain. We used a pair of the Telefunken Elam 260s as a stereo pair. Going through the DW Fern VT2 preamp, and we're being compressed with the Compex and then we had the Cascade Fatheads as a stereo room pair. Going into the Ingram preamp and being compressed with the DBX-162 compressor. We started with the Elam 260s in the front of the room in XY position. What we found was the people in the front row sounded too close. The sound of that instrument as a person would have perceived it a, a 
150 years ago was not the sound you would hear a foot away from it. It would be the sound that you would hear in the room that it was sort of activating. So I essentially started messing around with pointing the mics, not directly at the players, but up straight up in the air. It looks wrong, you know what I mean? You look at it and it's like, wait, that's not how microphones work. You don't point them away from the thing that you're recording. Miking it that way and just focusing more on the whole ensemble and not the individual elements creates a more natural sense of what is being performed. So if you can capture a really good ensemble as a whole, then it's going to sound great. So for Cassandra's vocals, we used the Neumann U67 into the DW Fern VT2 preamp and compress that with the Empirical Labs Distressor. Cassandra, just like Sam, they've got this thing going where they sing impossibly quietly. It's an aesthetic choice, right? But just like talking about orchestral instruments activating a room, there's a point at which your voice pulled back too quietly is no longer behaving like a natural acoustic instrument. So it becomes really challenging from even for microphones to pick up these sounds. Yes, yeah, so the gain is all the way up, right? I feel like right now we need to take all the qualities you like about your voice when it's really quiet yeah. and just turn it up just to gain consistency. Yeah. It's not that I don't like quiet voices, you know. It's that the, the treble starts to distort before you can even hear the low end. Yeah. So that's what we need to do. We need to try to just bring the whole thing up. Yeah, even it out a little bit. The 67 is, if you're going to sing quietly, it's a great mic for that just because it can pick up those little nuances of a very like soft performance. At the same time, you have to be really conscious of distance from the mic, how much is she like moving around a lot, is she like, how consistent is she staying? So it just meant, you know, as we were mixing it, there was a lot of riding the volumes, riding the EQ to make sure that, you know, her proximity wasn't sort of really distorted by how quiet she was singing, that kind of thing. Sounding beautiful. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, do it again. I mean, uh, we were sort of just saying, like, you're just starting to sound like you're getting warmer and warmer, you know? That's great. All right, you ready? <laughs> In the end, we were really lucky because everybody brought their A game. Cassandra brought an exceptional song. Sam brought incredibly awesome and inspired production ideas. All the players showed up ready to play and to give it their all. And it was about reducing a lot of detail back down to you know, what's appropriate for this simple, beautiful, well-crafted song. Shaking Through is produced by Weatherday Music, a nonprofit dedicated to supporting independent music and the community that surrounds it. Your support helps sustain this series, which creates bold new art and resources to inspire the independent music community. To get involved, go to weathervanemusic.org.